there's a, it's, there's a long story to it in a short version. I'll try to give you something in the middle. So basically about two, yeah, I'm going on my third year in India now. So I've been here for two years. And when I had moved, I moved from San Francisco, California. And at the time, you know, I was gigging a lot. I primarily trained as a classical, a Western classical musician. Um, and I just was in the habit of just sending my resume out everywhere. And I had sent out so many that I completely forgot about it. And one day I got an email from A.R. Raymond's music school saying, are you still interested in coming here? And I, and I saw the email and I said, you know, yeah, of course, why not? So I said, thanks, let's, let's have a chat. And long story short, you know, I, I had a really good chat with them, really hit it off with the whole team there. Uh, Snigida, who you're going to be meeting and hearing from later when we're playing on the uh, channel during our performance, she was also a student at the school um, several years back. And as soon as I got off the plane in India, it felt like a second home, which is rare for me because I've, I've traveled a lot. And everywhere I've been, you know, everyone has that friend who's like, oh, you've got to go to France or, oh, you've got to go, you know, to some country. Here, I got off the plane in India, was like, this is it. This is it. Yeah. So it just really felt good. I was aware of a little bit in some of the Western film scores he had done, but uh, at the time my experience was, was pretty limited until I, until I moved over here in terms of like Carnatic, Hindustani, and Raymond's, you know, Tamil film scores and Bollywood film scores. It's, well, first of all, it's really, really different from Western classical. So f f my impression of uh, Indian classical is it tends to be more about keeping a tradition and then also uh, more about the journey of a particular rag or the journey of a particular piece. Western classical is almost kind of constantly developing. So if you're studying, say, a piece from the Baroque era, it's going to be really different from a piece in the Romantic era or so on. So it's easier to kind of put Western pieces into little historical boxes. But from moving here, and I remember saying this during my interview, what I thought was really interesting, because my students are Western classical guitar students at the conservatory, they come from an entirely different tradition of music in India. So if anything, they're hearing music that's old to me. Like the Western classical stuff is old to me, stuff that's been around a couple hundred years. But they're hearing it with brand new set of ears. So if anything, it gives them a unique advantage uh, when they're learning or going into performing, which I think is, for me, that's one of the coolest things about being here. Oh man, th there's tons of up-and-coming musicians there. That's what I love the most about India and why you know, I want to stay here as long as I can. If you go any recording studio or down so many different neighborhoods, there's tons of uh, film composers, tons of television composers, tons of recording artists. It's like every other person I know is involved in the scene in some way. That's one of the most fun things about you know, living in Chennai. So when I was eight years old, my, I kept begging my dad for a guitar. I don't know if it was for my birthday or what, but he played and finally he got me an Olympic white uh, Fender Strat, which is my favorite because it's the same kind of guitar Jimi Hendrix had. A few years go by, my mom gets sick of hearing the same rock songs in the basement, so she puts me into classical guitar lessons. And at first it was kind of like, I, I didn't know what to expect, but I really enjoyed the challenge of it and I stuck with it and ended up going to uh, college for classical guitar? Oh, um, that's a good question. I mean, I'm always pretty much nervous, but I'm really good at covering it up. Like right now, I'm a little bit nervous too, but it's sort of like there's a feeling that you have to kind of, you have to learn to love it. <laughs> yeah. Personally, for me, I'd take stage any day over recording. Um, personally, that's one of the drawbacks I see in the Indian music scene is you have a lot of people that, um, you know, when you're doing so many sessions, the, the good thing about it is you can really craft something and hear it as it progresses from the ground up. But one of the drawbacks is if you haven't performed something a lot before you record it, you kind of, you can lose that sense of how it's going to interact with an audience. Well, I think that's a really good point that you made about the difference between, say, getting known for performing versus known for recording. So I think it's really, really cool that a lot of people, uh, they go to the movies here and it's almost like the soundtrack is more famous than the movie in some examples, which is really, really cool. In terms of recording or performing, obviously, I, I love anything that involves music. So whether it's a performance or contributing to a song in the studio, I'm happy with, with either scenario. The interesting thing about some of the studio work is that you run into a lot of the same people on the scene. So it's really, really fun to like play with a familiar face. And then you, know, you, don't, 
you, you end up being on the same movie or being on the same project coming out. So when I first moved here, I think it was not even a month into my stay in Chennai, one of my coworkers at the time is a very, very smart man. His name's Jeremy. He teaches in Turkey now. He ended up uh, putting me in touch with someone. He said, hey, do you want to meet my friend Ramesh Vinayakam? And I said, yeah, sure, what's he do? He's like, oh, he's a film composer. He's a guy. I'd never met the guy. I didn't know what to expect from him. And he said, just bring your guitar. We're going to hang out. So I didn't know that he was a, you know, a big film composer and what he was working on. And I showed up at his studio, and he had a, you know, he had a system that he's working on, and I believe he's premiered it now in London and in Germany to huge success. Like, he's doing basically what Joseph Haydn or Berlioz did for Western classical music to Indian classical in terms of accessibility and organizing the written form. So he started working on this notation system with me and a couple other Western classical musicians. So I had no clue what to expect. He had these you know, crazy boxes that had these squiggles through it, and they all represented a particular gamaka. Another month or so goes by, and like, I played some very beginner rocks. You know, a lot of the Indian classical singers and performers would put to shame you know, what, I would, what I was able of playing. But I was able to learn some stuff really uh, uh, quickly, and I, I loved it. It gave me a whole new perspective on the music. Mm -hmm.